You're welcome to the Chula Vista Superior Court, where Judge Patricia Garcia presides over Darla Jackson's trial, a 25-year-old woman who chased down and ran over a U.S. sailor in a road rage incident. He sustained severe injuries and was later pronounced dead at the hospital. Darla Jackson was charged in court with the first-degree murder of 39-year-old Navy Chief Petty Officer Zach Buab. Darla Jackson was seen in court with her head bowed and in tears as she was arraigned. She continued to shake and cry as the proceedings continued. Darla said that she deeply regretted everything that had happened and that it ended badly for everyone involved. The mother of one was riding a Nissan Altima when she was involved in an altercation with Zach Buo, who was on a motorcycle. After making hand gestures at her and kicking the side of her car, Darla began to chase him down and eventually hit him from behind at top speed. She said she never meant to harm him and only wanted to get his plate number details, but some eyewitnesses believe that it was interesting. However, her defense attorney, Stephen Klein, begged to differ. He said, She's very sorry. She's very scared. She's very upset. She's very traumatized. At the accident scene, several cars stopped along the freeway to assess the damage caused and assist the victim, even as first responders attended to Zach in an attempt to save his life. Eyewitnesses confirmed that Darla had been chasing down the victim, who was riding ahead on a motorcycle before the fatal crash occurred. This video clip from a passenger's cell phone taken minutes before the crash confirmed the eyewitness accounts. Darla was in hot pursuit of the motorcycle before crashing into it from behind. How would you describe the behavior of the Ultima in your perception? Pretty aggressive. And was that from the beginning to the end or just at certain points? Yeah, from the beginning to the end. A witness at the scene of the incident was questioned and gave his testimony in court. This is what he had to say. Somebody uh, came over and was holding his head. Somebody was holding a wound on his leg. And then uh, they said he stopped breathing. So somebody started CPR. I guess I would call it a little hysterical. She was saying, I didn't mean to do this, and I was just trying to get his information. Meanwhile, a throng of motorcycle riders were present outside the courtroom as they protested the incident and called for justice to be served for Zach Boob. The family of Zach Boob also spoke passionately about their lost loved one and asked that the court meet out the maximum sentence for the crime. After the sentencing, Zach's father later commented that he did not believe justice had been served. As the judge read out the sentence of six years, Darla Jack Jackson erupted in tears. She sobbed loudly, shaking and bending over as the sentence was read. The judge said there wasn't enough evidence to prove that she had run Zach over deliberately, but believed that she still deserved to spend some time in prison for her actions. She was sentenced to six years in a women's correctional facility. You're welcome to the Arapahoe County Court, where District Attorney George Browkler presides over Isabella Guzman's trial, the 18-year-old teenager who went viral on TikTok for killing her mother. Isabella Guzman was charged in court with the first-degree murder of her mother, 47-year-old Yun Mihoy. Isabella Guzman's court videos sent chills down the spines of many, as she often looked directly into the camera, making weird gesticulations and smiling occasionally. Yet she surprisingly gained popularity on TikTok, with myriads of people following her account and claiming that she must have committed the crime because of something terrible that was done to her. Her story, trailing from childhood, however, does not justify her viciously stabbing her mother, leaving over 70 stab wounds. Investigators continue to look into the matter, questioning her intensively, but reportedly getting exasperated by her elusive behavior. She continued to deny that she was the one who had committed the crime or that she killed her mother. It can't be happening to me right now. This can't be happening. This can't. It is. I never killed anybody. You killed your mom last no, night? No, I did not. In court, she put forward a plea of insanity, represented by her attorneys, claiming that she thought she was killing some other woman and saving the world. Isabella said she had no idea that the woman she had stabbed several times was, in fact, her own mother. Of course, this claim came off as preposterous to many, especially Ryan Hoy, who was married to Yunmi Hoy at the time of the incident. He said that there had been several instances in which Isabella threatened her mother and that they often had altercations and arguments. Just a day before the incident, she had written a note to her mom saying, Saying, you will pay. Ryan recalled the events of that night in an interview. He described the events preceding that night and also how that night played out. And she came down to the basement last night and said that she was afraid of Isabella. She said that Isabella had threatened her or cursed at her and spit in her face Okay. when she was laying down up there. Isabella was in the bathroom. She, like I said, she was pushing against the door as I was trying to open it. I tried to open it, 
Okay. And Isabella was pushing hard against it. Ryan was in the living room when he heard his wife's terrifying screams. She had told him she was going upstairs to take a shower, but unfortunately, that would be the last time he would see her alive. By the time he got upstairs, there was blood running from under the door, and he ran downstairs to call 911 responders for help. Isabella had stabbed her mother 48 times in the neck and 31 times in the face. Ryan said when Isabella eventually opened the door, she simply walked past him like he wasn't there. His wife was lying on the floor, covered in blood, and she wasn't breathing. Meanwhile, a recent video shows Isabella saying that she committed the crime due to mental illness. I was not myself when I did that, and I have since been restored to full health. As the judge read out Isabella's sentencing, she continued to look around strangely before staring into the camera and pointing towards her eyes. District Attorney George Brockler said, We punish people who make decisions to do wrong when they knew better, and they could have done something differently. And in this particular case, I am convinced, based on the evidence that I've seen and the information that's been presented in court, that this woman did not know right from wrong and she could not have acted differently than she did, given the significant schizophrenia and paranoid delusions, audible visual hallucinations, that she was going through. I was convinced of it, and I felt like in the interest of justice, I had to take these steps. She was found not guilty by reason of insanity. You're welcome to the Nassau County Court, where Judge James Daniel presides over the trial of Kimberly Kessler, a 50-year-old woman who killed her co-worker and made the body disappear forever. Kimberly Kessler was charged in court with the first-degree murder of 34-year-old Jolene Cummings, mother of three. Jolene Cummings was reported missing in May 2018, and police began a futile search for her before realizing that she'd been killed by her co-worker, a dangerous woman who had been on the run for two and a half decades. Jolene was supposed to pick up her children from her ex-husband, but never showed up, arousing suspicions as to her whereabouts. When the police contacted Kimberly, since they believed she was the last person to see Jolene, she gave excuses not to show up and refused to go to work. In court, Kimberly portrayed typical Karen behavior, throwing tantrums and yelling during court proceedings. She was completely uninterested and uncooperative and had to be confined to a separate room at some point as she watched the trial via a video link. In a malicious attempt to be exempted from the trial, Kimberly Kessler embarked on a self-starvation spree, losing tremendous weight. She appeared in the courtroom looking extremely emaciated and had to be wheeled in with a wheelchair. Reports indicated that she dripped from 196 pounds to only 74 pounds. The judge, however, overlooked her tantrums and ruled that she was mentally competent for trial. The tantrums continued. I want to get rid of the public defender's office. Yeah, exactly. Jordan Beard is Jordan Beard. Yeah, exactly. Jordan Beard is Johnson's nephew. Jordan Beard is Jolie's cousin. And I refuse this assigned counsel. I refuse the public defender's office. I refuse it. I have refused it. I refuse the public defender's office. They appointed Jordan Beard, Jolene Fleming's cousin. When she refused to be quiet and allow court proceedings to go on smoothly, she was instructed to be wheeled out of the courtroom. As she was being taken out, she continued to speak at the top of her voice. Sure, I can sit up here and I'm going to say what I want, when I want, how I want, which you silenced me for years. You have silenced me for years. So let everyone know this is just the tip of the iceberg. Her accusations were looked into but found to be untrue and baseless. It appeared that she just wanted to be able to represent herself in court. Well, we went through and I said, you know, well, what's your basis? And she said the same thing, uh, which was he's related to, I guess, your deputy or director Johnson, which is just factually not true. So um, it was denied at that time. The police officers also had much to say about her conduct in the prison, stating that she would violently refuse to eat, undress herself, smear feces on the walls, and even hurl it at prison officials. She is completely undressed and has feces smeared on the window. Court hearings proceeded without Kimberly physically present in the courtroom. Her desperate attempts to hamper the rule of law were unsuccessful. Evidence was presented proving that she did indeed kill her co-worker, Jolene. Her search history showed that she had searched for co-worker guilty of murder missing person body not found before the incident and Jolene Cummings no body no crime. The sentence was given by Judge James H. Daniel. She was sentenced to life in jail without the possibility of parole. 
You're welcome to the Vista Superior Court, where Diana Lovejoy is standing trial for conspiring to kill her estranged husband, Greg Mulvihill. Judge Sim Von Kalinowski presides over the case. 45-year-old Diana Lovejoy was charged in court with conspiracy to commit murder. In court, Diana Lovejoy showed no emotions even as her ex-husband testified of the harrowing events that occurred when he was lured into a death trap by his wife and an accomplice, her gun instructor. Before the crime, Diana had reported to Child Protective Services that her husband had sexually assaulted her and that she suspected he was assaulting their three-year-old son. This was brought up in court, but evidence showed that the case was considered false. He had to go through numerous psychological evaluations. He had to see psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists. The unanimous conclusion was that he, this was made up, that he had not molested his little boy. The truth was that Diana just wanted to be the one who walked away from the divorce with everything. She didn't want to pay Greg, her ex-husband, his $120,000 share of a house they jointly owned, and also didn't want to share custody of their only child. So she decided that taking him out was the best option. However, she continued to deny this with her accomplice, McDavid Jr., also stating that if he actually wanted to kill Greg, he'd be dead. I fired six shots in the air and once they started running i ceased fire marines are taught if they wanted to kill someone two to the center mass one to the head thankfully greg was not alone when the shooting occurred he was with a friend who promptly called for emergency rescue in no time he was being examined by doctors who realized that the bullet had only barely missed his heart just a little closer and greg mulvihill would have been dead the police patrol remained on the scene fearing that there was a random shooter on the prowl for more victims until they caught wind of what the real situation was it was discovered that diana had paid a thousand dollars to mcdavid to shoot her husband he lured him into the area saying that he had some information that could be useful in helping him resolve the conflicts in his divorce case and get all that he was entitled to. But by the time Greg arrived, McDavid was somewhere in the bushes with his gun mounted and ready to take the shot. When Greg and his friend spotted him, it was already too late. Shots had been fired, and Greg Mulvihill was badly hit. As they placed a call to 911, Greg lost consciousness. And we ran the other direction, away from the, the gunfire. Lying in the sniper position, shoots six to seven more rounds. As the judge read out the sentence of 26 years, Diana Lovejoy looked to her attorney in shock and then proceeded to collapse in her chair as her family members began to scream for her to be helped. The courtroom was immediately vacated and emergency responders examined Diana before she was wheeled out on a stretcher to be taken to the hospital. We, the jury, in the above and cover cause, find the defendant, Diana Jean Lovejoy, guilty of the crime of a attempted murder of Greg we further find true the allegation that Diana Jean Lovejoy was vicariously armed with a firearm. Diana Lovejoy will be spending the next 26 years in jail. You're welcome to the Douglas County Court, where Judge Robert J. James presides over the trial of Sahara Tabriz Fakir, a 32-year-old woman who stormed into the home of a 66-year-old businessman, husband, father, and grandfather, fatally attacking him. Sahara Tabriz Fakir was charged in court with the first-degree murder of 66-year-old Jerry Wheeler. Sahara was tracked down and apprehended about a month after she committed the dastardly crime. Shortly after, she was in court for her first appearance to be briefed about her rights and for the charges against her to be read. And it started on a very bizarre note. Talk about top of the charts Karen behavior. She's charged with the murder of Jerry Franklin Wheeler. You understand that? In the Masonic Courthouse, I understand that. I understand that this courthouse is a cursed courthouse. Yes, I understand. Okay. And if you are judging me, you're not God fearing, I'll always have to judge you. And everyone else is not God fearing. Understand Everyone in the courthouse was beyond stunned as she continued to utter strange things in response to the questions asked by the judge. The judge, however, remained calm and unfazed as he continued to answer her questions. When told that she could apply to the office of the public defender for a lawyer, she shunned the advice and demanded to be released. If you cannot employ a lawyer, then you can apply to the public defender's office for an appointment of one at no cost to you. I'm just trying to inform you of your rights. Now, I better be released from that Masonic courthouse. She continued to refer to the courthouse as evil and referred to other people as disbelieving, saying that some form of punishment and revenge would be meted out to them. She even referred to Allah as her lawyer and said he would defend her by speaking through her. You have a lawyer. Allah is my lawyer right now. Are you He's speaking to me? Are you going to get a lawyer? Allah is my lawyer right now. 
And if you do not release me, I will have this vengeance on you. Like he did in 2009 when he sent that flood. It is suspected that she was referring to an incident in 2009 where she had an altercation with her probation officer and threatened to slit the throat of her probation officer, threatened to kill a deputy, and destroyed prison property. But the judge continues. Grand jury will meet and it will determine whether or not to proceed with this case. Do you understand that? If they disbelieve, they better not proceed. The judge also informed her that she would not be getting a bond. This she repeatedly asked why, giving a defiant attitude. Sahara Tabriz Fakir was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. She was sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole in a women's correctional facility.